requirements. It is very important that you know the buttons to access your BIOS and boot menu. The boot menu may need to be activated from a BIOS. If you don't know how, search for it on the internet or YouTube. Disable Secure Boot in the BIOS because the tutorial does not include how to do this with Secure Boot in order to simplify the installation, but if you want to do it with Secure Boot, there will be a few extra steps to take, which are simple. You must have a USB flash drive with at least 4GB of storage space. Make sure that it is not important to you because it will be formatted during the process, which will delete everything on it. These are the three requirements before you begin. Follow everything carefully. With that said, let's begin this tutorial. First, let's disable Fast Startup so that you can use the Windows partition on Arch Linux. Open the control panel, go to System and Security, then click on Power Options, and then click on Choose what the power button does. Unfortunately, I don't have this option, but if you do, you need to disable it. Click on Change the settings that are currently unavailable, disable Fast Startup, and then click on Save Changes. The second step is to disable encryption which is usually present if you have purchased a new computer with Windows 11. If you do not do this, you will not be able to modify partitions. So open settings and go to privacy security. I don't have this option but if you see device encryption, click on it and disable encryption. It will take some time depending on how full your disk is. If you haven't used much space, it will be disabled in about 10 to 20 minutes, but if it's very full, it will take one to two hours, depending on how fast your disk is. Now let's give Arch Linux some space. I recommend having at least 32 gigabytes of free space, so open create and format hard disk partitions. Select a large partition, such as the Windows partition in my case, left click and select shrink volume. And enter the amount of space to shrink in MB, Write, for example, if you want 32 gigabytes, write 32,000. So just like in my case, I will give Arch Linux a 32 gigabytes partition and then click on shrink. You should have a black partition unallocated. Leave it as it is. And now let's move on to the best part. This is the official Arch Linux website. All links to websites and tools are in the description. Scroll down and click on a link with the flag of your country or a country near you to download the ISO file. Click on the text or button labeled Arch Linux with a date and ending with x86 underscore 64.iso. In the meantime, download Rufus so you can write the ISO file to your USB drive. I'm downloading the portable version. After you have finished downloading everything, open Rufus and insert your USB stick. After that, click Select and select the Arch Linux ISO file. For Partition Scheme, choose GPT if you are using a modern computer or one with a UFI BIOS, otherwise use MBR. To find out, search for and open System Information and look at the BIOS mode entry. If it is UEFI, use GPT. If it is something else, use MBR. Click on Start and accept all warnings. It will take one or two minutes to write the ISO to the USB drive. After you have finished writing, close everything, turn off the computer, turn it back on, and select to boot from the USB stick. You can do this via the boot menu or you can set the USB as the first option in the BIOS. Select the first option and wait for Arch Linux to load. It will take about one minute. You should see a screen like this. First, for convenience, let's use a larger text font. Use the command set font to hyphen U20B. If your computer is connected to the internet via an Ethernet cable or USB tethering, which means you are using your phone or tablet as a way to access the internet via USB. To check if you have internet, use the command pinggoogle.com or any other website. If you have results like mine, you have internet access. To exit the test, press Ctrl plus C. If you want to use Wi-Fi, Use the command I W C T L, then use the device list command to see which network card you have. If you see off instead of powered on, use the exit command to exit I W D and use the refkill list command to see if anything is blocked. If it is, use the refkill unblock all command, then check again to see if it's powered on. If that doesn't work, use an Ethernet cable or USB tethering. However, for those who can use it, use the command station the name of your network card scan. Then use the command station the name of your network card get hyphen networks. 
Then use the command station followed by the name of your network card. Connect followed by the name of your Wi-Fi network. If the network name contains spaces, as in my case, write it between quotation marks and then, of course, enter your password. If everything went well, type exit to exit I, W, D. And run a test with pinggoogle.com or any other website, and if you get results, you have internet access. To exit the test, press Ctrl plus C. Now, let's move on to the main part, partition configuration and installation. Pay close attention and follow everything carefully, otherwise you risk deleting Windows and everything you have. Use the command L, S, B, L, K. You will see various disks and partitions. In my case, SDA is the disk and SDA1 and others are the partitions. I created my partition on SDA. Then use the command CF, disk slash dev slash your disk. Go to select your partition where it says free space and is similar in size to the one you created on Windows. Select new and create a one gigabyte boot partition if you have UEFI. Otherwise, skip this step. To do this, type 1G and press enter. Select the one gigabyte partition, go to type and select EFI system. Now let's create the swap partition. The swap is a partition or file that the system will use when the RAM memory is full, but certain programs also want it even if your memory is still free. The choice is yours. You can skip this step if you want. Then select the free space partition again, select new, and create a partition that is half the size of your RAM or whatever size you want to allocate. In my case, I will create a four gigabytes partition, so I will type 4G and press enter. Then select type and change to Linux swap. Finally, select the free space again, select new, and simply press enter. Check carefully that you haven't made any mistakes. If you have made mistakes, select quit and try again. If everything is okay, select right, type yes, and press enter. Then select quit, use the clear command if you want, and use the L, S, B, L, K command again. I have three new partitions at the end, SDA 5, 6, and 7. From their size, you should be able to figure out which ones are your partitions for Arch Linux. First, however, we need to format them. Let's start with the boot partition, which in my case is SDA5. Use the command mkfs.fat-f32 slash dev slash your boot partition. Now for the swap, use the command mk swap slash dev slash your swap partition. Use the command swapin slash dev slash your swap partition to see if everything is working. And now the main one, use the command mkfse xt 4 slash dev slash your arch linux partition for the arch linux partition you will have to wait a little while use the clear command if you want and use l s b l k to see if everything is okay as you can see the swap partition is already working but now we have to mount the other two partitions the boot and arch linux ones mount the arch linux partition first use the mount command slash dev slash your arch linux partition slash mnt then use mkdi r slash mnt slash boot. This will create a boot folder for the boot partition. Then use the command mount slash dev slash your boot partition slash mnt slash boot. Use the lsblk command again. As you can see, all partitions are now in place and correctly mounted. Now let's move on to the actual installation. Use the command pacman hyphen s y arch install. This will update the installer to the latest version. Use the arch install command, and the first option will be arch install language. Change it if you want, it is only the language of the installer. Select locales, and here you can change the keyboard layout and language to install for Arch Linux. I only change the keyboard. After that, select mirrors and repositories, select select regions, choose your country or one close to you, and very importantly, select optional repositories and enable multi-lib. Then select disk configuration and select partitioning, then choose pre-mounted configuration and write slash MNT. The ZRAM option creates a file of four gigabytes or perhaps more and will use it as swap just like the swap partition. If you want, leave it to have swap or even more swap memory, it's up to you. Personally, I disable it. Select bootloader and choose grub is the easiest and fastest to install. The host name is the name of the system that other systems see when they see you via network, but also what you see in your terminal. So, for example, in the terminal you will see Arch Linux. Personally, I leave it like that.
Select authentication and create a root password, then add a user and give that user access to the super user, sudo, then select confirm and exit. Select profile, then select type and choose desktop. The best ones are GNOME and KD Plasma, but there are others too. Personally, I choose KD Plasma. Select graphics driver, and here it depends on your video card. If you have an Intel or AMD video card, choose the option with the name of your vendor, such as AMD, or leave it on open source. There is no difference in performance. If you have an NVIDIA card, you can leave it on open source, but performance will be lower, and there may be problems. The best option is NVIDIA proprietary. In my case, I leave it on open source. Select Applications and, if available, select Bluetooth and enable it. Then go to Audio and choose Pipe Wire. Select Kernels and here it is important to note that the default kernel is a kernel that is updated very frequently and always has the latest updates available while the hardened kernel focuses on security and can, for example, automatically terminate a process if it suspects an attack. The LTS is long-term support so it receives occasional security updates but does not always have new features useful for servers or similar things. Zen is for performance, gaming, workstations, creators, and so on. The choice is yours. I chose the default. Select Network Configuration and choose Use Network Manager so you will have automatic access to the Internet. I skip additional packages because let's say it's a mess trying to find the packages and things you want, but we'll do that later. Select Time Zone and select your region so you will have the correct time. Automatic Time Sync, leave it enabled so you always have the correct time. Before proceeding, verify your configuration to ensure there are no errors or undesirable elements. If you are satisfied with your configuration, select Install and choose Yes. The installation process will begin and you will have to wait 10 to 20 minutes depending on the speed of your network and your computer. When you have finished installing, do not reboot, but select Exit Arch Install. There are still a few crucial things to install. Use the command arch-ch root slash mnt. After that, use the command you see on the screen. This command was created for UEFI systems. At the end, where it says bootloader ID equal, enter a name you like. You will see it in the BIOS and boot menu. For users with legacy BIOS, those who do not have UEFI, use the command grub install slash dev slash your disk. Please note that this refers to the entire disk, not a partition. Therefore, if you have a legacy BIOS, it would be slash SDA, not SDA5 or SDA1, just SDA. Enter the name of your disk. I forgot to install OS Prober first. Use the command pacman hyphen s OS hyphen Prober. After that, use the command nano slash etc slash default slash grub and scroll down to the bottom where it says grub disable OS prober, remove the hash, and then press control plus x, click y, and then press enter. Use the command grub hyphen mk config hyphen o slash boot slash grub slash grub dot c f g. This will update grub and you can choose to boot from Arch Linux, Windows, or other operating systems. And as a final command, use pacman-s, Firefox, git vim, will get fast fetch. These are some essential packages, but install others if you know them and want them. This completes the installation of Arch Linux. Use the exit command to exit crud and use the reboot command. I forgot to unmount the partitions, so in my case you may be stuck on this screen for 30 seconds to 1 minute. Remember to remove the USB stick when you reboot. You should see a screen like this. If you don't see it and Windows starts up, set the Arch Linux boot option as primary in the BIOS or select it from the boot menu. As you can see, I'm using Arch Linux and I can browse the internet, for example. And if you don't believe me, the terminal is the definitive proof. And as you can see, I'm actually using Arch Linux. And that's all. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to leave me a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the bell. Thank you for your time and for watching, but I think it's time to say goodbye. I wish you a nice day, and I hope to see you again. Goodbye.